I first met Clayton about 10 years ago. I was ending a marriage. He'd soon begin one. Not long after we met, he shared a story with me that he'd written a few years earlier. It was about something horrible that happened while he was on vacation in Miami Beach. We both thought that would be the story he'd present tonight. And we were both wrong. It turns out that Clay's original story wasn't a story at all. It was the catalyst for a series of events that would change his life. With this story, 12th Street Beach, please welcome my dear friend, Clayton Littlewood. week of 1999 on holiday in South Beach with my ex-boyfriend Dale and his new boyfriend. It sounds awkward, but it wasn't. I met Dale in 1983. I was 19, Dale was 20. He was from Liverpool. I was a West Country boy. He was confident and outgoing. I was shy and introverted. I remember our first date. We'd arranged to meet in a club. Dale was surrounded by guys vying for his attention. He was so handsome, with his rockabilly hairstyle, the thrust of his chin, his swimmer's shoulders. We quickly moved in together, and every day Dale would leave me a note. I love you so much, Clay, he'd write. We're going to have such a good life. And we did. By 1999, we'd already been in each other's lives for 20 years. Our relationship had evolved from boyfriends to best friends. So it seemed perfectly natural to be sitting on 12th Street Beach on New Year's Eve with Dale and his new boyfriend. 12th Street Beach was paradise back then. That few hundred yards contained more beautiful bronze muscular men than anywhere else in the world. <laughs> it was a place to be seen, to hunt and be hunted. Loves were discovered and relationships fell apart on that sacred sand. It was also a place to say goodbye, as I was to find out. Dale's boyfriend was brought up born again. Now his first serious gay relationship was messing with his head. He was having dark visions. He said he could see lights on the horizon beckoning him. He said something big was about to happen. Something big did happen. He overdosed on crystal that night, in our hotel room, shaking uncontrollably, crying out for help. By the time the paramedics got into the hospital, he was dead. Dale and I stayed in Miami for a month after that, dealing with police, an autopsy, undertakers, a distraught family. And I watched Dale break down on 12th Street Beach as he emptied his boyfriend's ashes into the ocean. That was when I decided that I would never come back to Miami. It was Dale who persuaded me to reconsider. He said, if we don't go back, what happened will haunt us forever. So in 2004, we returned. We stayed at the same hotel, in the same rooms. And every evening, I sat with Dale on 12th Street Beach until sunset, my arms around his shoulders as he stared out to sea. The night before Dale and I were to return to England, I had one of those crossroads moments I remember thinking, should I go out one more night or should I go to bed early? Dale insisted I go out and enjoy myself, so I did. And that night I met a sexy Cuban bodybuilder <laughs> who'd grown up in Miami. His name was Jorge. 
Jorge and I spent one night together and began a long distance relationship, me in London and Jorge in the US. After a year, it got to the point where one of us would have to make a move. So we got married and Jorge moved to London. Meeting Jorge changed my life. Jorge was so creative, it ignited the creativity in me. We opened a menswear shop in Soho in London, and I wrote two books about our life there. Elton John read them and invited us to dinner. Jorge taught me about art history, ballet, interior design, and menswear. We traveled the world, and we met writers and artists and actors and friends who loved us. I met the perfect partner at the perfect time in my life, at the perfect time in his life. I have a vision of us now, sitting on a sea wall in Key West, throwing pebbles into the water, looking outward in the same direction, into our future. But happiness is a strange thing. We can only measure it in hindsight. Tragedy started with Dale. He never recovered from his boyfriend's death. And Dale's life was a slow spiral downwards with addictions, health issues, and depression. I remember the last time I saw him. He phoned me, confused and upset. I rushed to his apartment to find him hallucinating, a syringe on the floor, blood dripping from his arm. I tried so many times to save him, but he pushed everyone away, and eventually he pushed me away. And Dale's body lay unidentified <clears throat> in a mortuary for six months before any of his family or friends even knew he was dead. I was still processing Dale's death when, a year later, Jorge was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Within three months, he was in a hospital, drifting in and out of consciousness. At one point, he opened his eyes. They were filled with so much love. I said, I love you. He tried to put his arms around me, and he mouthed, I love you too. I said, you're the best boyfriend in the world. And a cheeky smile flickered across his face and he said, I know. <laughs> Those were the last words we shared. I know we all have to go at some point, but the speed of it. I said to a friend, first Dale and now Jorge, how can this be happening? My friend said, Clay, this is your burden, and this is your destiny. I didn't know what that meant at the time. I thought Jorge and I were going to grow old together. My life was unraveling. I'd lost my first partner and my husband. While I was on bereavement leave, my job laid me off. My mortgage company was closing in on me. There were times when I struggled to breathe. Other times, I wanted to stop breathing. My doctor suggested antidepressants, but I refused. What did Dale and Jorge's love mean if I numbed their loss with drugs? I arranged two funerals for Jorge, one in London and one here in Miami for his family and friends. And I scattered his ashes in all our favorite places and I took a handful along to 12th Street Beach. It was a late August afternoon, just a few people dotted around, gulls crying overhead. I sat down, waves folding over my feet, and I sprinkled Jorge's ashes into the water. That beach that had once been paradise, now it was a place of remembrance. I was saying goodbye to one life, about to embark on another. But what sort of life would it be, and where would I live it? That's when I had the strangest feeling. 
The ebb and flow of the tide gave me a feeling of happiness. And as the waves receded and returned, it struck me, maybe I needed to return here. Maybe this is what my friend, friend meant by my destiny. As the widower of a US citizen, I qualified for a green card, so I applied, and I was accepted. A few days ago, I sat on the beach at sunset and stared out at the ocean. I thought of Dale, and I thought of Jorge, the two loves of my life. I thought of what they've meant to me, and how much I miss them. And I thought how strange life can be that their deaths could lead me to a new life, in the very place I swore I would never come back to, my new home, just a few blocks away from 12th Street Beach. Thank you.